Yes. Um, and where, um, you know, there's all this talk about potentially luxury development will come to Fulton Houses. They want to demolish Fulton Houses, uh, institute the RAD conversion, which actually will uh, cause um, rent hikes that you know, people on fixed incomes cannot afford, uh, displacing people and leading people right into the homeless shelter. And into poverty. Yes, and let tell me, uh, so you have a picture of uh, our city favorite Council. city council speaker, Corey Johnson. Yes, I do. And uh, tell me what you think about all this. I think Corey Johnson, as I always thought, I think about Corey Johnson, was I always thought that he was in the pocket of developers. Um, it shows here. He, he doesn't care anything about the people on Main Street but he cares about the developers. And city, he doesn't care about the people on Main Street, but he cares about the developers. Right. It says, up the, in City Hall today, it says, of the, of the developers, by the developers, and for the developers. It used to say, of the people, by the people, and for the people. Mm -hmm. But Corey Johnson and all of the elected officials, and mainly city, city council people, they're in the pocket of developers and they need to stop selling out our communities. Right. Where are, we are the people who put them in office, and they need to be hold to us, right. the people. And also, so George, you were a community board for. Yes. And Carl from the Speaker's office, you know, he got up and he's like, oh, you know, you know, I'm from the Speaker's office, and Corey Johnson wants to work with the tenants at Fulton Houses. Yes. So tell me what your response to that is. I could not believe that because Corey Johnson has not been here. Uh, he's never shown up. The only one that has been here is yourself and the um, advocates who are fighting to protect Fulton Houses. Corey Johnson will not show up because he's so busy spending time with the developers. Mm -hmm. um, the people of Fulton Houses, they voted for him overwhelmingly, and then he treat them this way. Right, and that's not good. No. So will Fulton Houses vote for Corey for mayor? No way. Um, I'm telling my residents, don't vote for Corey Johnson at all. Um, and I believe that we should look at another direction. We need somebody from the outside of the system to come in to stop all of the overdevelopment. Okay, thank you, George. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. okay. So, very good. So, you guys, um, you know, we had a press conference before the NYCHA meeting. Um, I thought it was really, really successful. We had uh, Fox News, we had New York One, um, a reporter from WNYC. Um, uh, it got a lot of media attention, uh, and you know, I do, a, I do a New York Post. Yeah, I do a lot of media outreach. You know, I knock on everybody's door, and they never come. This time they came, which is really because of all you guys. Um, so, do you guys want to add anything? Oh, it was, it was very successful. Um, the NYCHA meeting afterwards obviously was not not very satisfying. Uh, they didn't answer anybody's questions. They took so long. They had, their, they had their puppets there talking about how uh -huh. Rad is wonderful. One woman was like, oh my God, it's like living on Park Avenue. <laughs> so, but the interesting thing is what Mary brought up is number one, those, those complexes were not demolished. And also the one in Far Rockway had FEMA money. So this is a completely different situation. Um, another thing another person brought up is that there is no environmental impact study if there was a buildings being demolished of course that always comes later not earlier which it should um mary brought up also like you know you can you can talk about these but like where's how come there's seven million dollars for a senior center um you know and seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars for the playground right there and nothing for um you know nitro repairs uh, but anyways it was very unsatisfying so i just wanted to report back there uh, but it was very, very well attended, and I think the New York One report said that like over a hundred people of the, you know, the tenants and advocates for showed up, which is really successful. So I think it was great. I just want to add to. We also went to the community board. Oh yes, yes. <coughs> so let's, let's talk about that. We went to the community board for, and we we raised these same issues about the funding. The $7.6 million where Night to Say was a community center, but in reality it's a senior center. I have nothing against seniors. Let's get that straight. But you're spending that much money on a senior center that for a few finished. years hasn't even been finished and it's not up and running for anyone. You're spending $770,000 on a playground that doesn't even look like it's worth 
that much money that was put in it. Now they're saying, oh, there's these costs. No, I can show you how I had a budget for Soundview Houses Playgrounds, and I have it on me, and it's detailed on the cost of everything. I don't know who approved that project for $770,000. That's shameful and disgraceful. And the senior center, $7.6 million, what are they doing? It's still not functioning. Seniors are still shuttered over to 26th Street. Hudson Guild. Hudson Guild. And it's owned by Hudson Guild as well. Hudson Guild runs this one too. What are they giving back to the community when they're not even paying rent? They have like a, 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 a lease or something where they pay nothing? Where does that leave built-in houses? We have to ensure that these programs that are profiting and these developers that are profiting from this community give, give back, back to the community they're affecting. We have to ensure that NYCHA doesn't take the money for NYCHA as a whole, but give it back to the communities that are being affected. We have to ensure that when these movie crews come here, they take up our best. parking, yeah. don't let us park here for two or three days. Where's that money going to? The city needs to contribute back to the communities they're affecting. That's right. Not the city as a whole, because it didn't affect the city as a whole. It's affecting we need to, us. We need to hold our politicians yes. accountable for all this. If they say it's going to be affordable, most of us cannot afford that because we are low-income families. We are working families. We are raising our families in a community. You're not tearing down a building. You're tearing down a community. You're tearing down families. Children are coming up to me and asking me, when is, are they going to take away my home? Okay. <clears throat> and um, on the night of the NYCHA meeting, I was up at, um, in East Harlem at Community Board 11 in East Harlem and I went up there to present a resolution asking for them to support us to find the money for NYCHA and they're going to um, they're going to debate that and work on their own resolution but before the night was over they did uh, vote the housing committee of community board 11 voted against any privatization of NYCHA so that's a good win for us because in East Harlem They've had a lot of gentrification, not as much as what has happened in Chelsea, but they're seeing a lot of gentrification too. And we found out this week that NYCHA is also going to be converting some apartments up in East Harlem on the Upper West Side and more in Brooklyn uh, under this thing that they call PACT, and it's just a fancy name for RAD. RAD, exactly. It's the same thing as RAD, so there's some handouts here if you want to see the next developments they are going to be converted. Elliot houses uh, on June 20th, on the evening of June 20th, and I'm going to be speaking there on behalf of Fight for Night. Where? Um, it's going to be at, um, on, at the Chelsea Elliot houses. I forget the community center. It's Hudson Guild. It's going to be at Hudson Guild on June 20th. On the evening, I'm going to be speaking there. I forget what time. I have that information somewhere I can find it. I'll, I'll share it with you next Saturday because there'll be enough time next Saturday for me to share it with you. Okay, anybody else? Anyone else have any information they want to share before we close our meeting? Anybody else? Okay, then we're meeting here again next Saturday at 3 o'clock to work on our banner. Next Saturday at 3 o'clock here. Thank you so much, everybody. An alliance is with the great people in Penn South, those who want to come on board to help. I think I know you're here, but can we have can we build an alliances with many more of those people who live in Penn South? Because if it happens in Niger, it will happen in Penn South soon. So I think okay. Uh, we're in Penn South, and nobody is taking the money out, which is why our, 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 we're affordable. We're going to be having a table next Saturday at 12 noon to petition to get out the word to the Penn South residents about showing some solidarity with Fulton because they're going to come after us sooner or later. And there's a lot of solidarity from Penn South and we're going to be there next Saturday uh, at 23rd and 8th from 12 to 2. And we'll distribute the leaflet for the action. A lot of people in Penn South grew up in Nigeria. They're very simple.